Please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. This morning we read the feeding of the 5,000 and also the story of Jacob, the turning from selfishness to selfless giving is in both of these stories. Uh, today we see that through simple gestures of hospitality and graciousness and generosity, Jesus feeds many, many people. In this wonderful painting by Eric Feather that's on the screen, I'd like to dim the lights for a moment so you can see it. It's also on your bulletin cover if you'd like to uh, take it home and study it there. Um, we see that that multiplication of the feast has already begun. And it's astounding to those who are in attendance, this man to the left of Jesus, uh, perhaps he's one of the disciples, suddenly realizes that this is an all-you-can-eat buffet. He is dumbfounded, his eyes are open, his uh, mouth is open, and he barely sees the people that he's sharing bread with. He begins to see that this is an endless feast and that God must be the source of this meal. He must, like others thought, this must, he must conclude this is like Moses in the desert where manna never stopped coming, where the food was continual, where God provided endlessly for God's people. Now God's doing the same thing through Jesus. I'll, I'll show another image because this remind, the story reminded me a little bit of our experience at Sierra Service Project this past um, summer. A couple weeks ago, this was my work team, I'm in the blue t-shirt, and by my side is a little lady named Mary in her red blouse uh, to my left in the picture. And Mary Lang was the most gracious receiver of the gifts that we were offering through Sierra Service Project. Um, you might say that ad, uh, offering to have teenage people put a new roof on your house is not the most exciting or appealing gift. It's a bit of a risk, actually, for a homeowner to take. But she took it graciously, and she received this gift, and uh, our youth did too. This is one of our youth on the far left, Tim, and other youth groups were represented from around the western United States. And we realized that this too was a miracle, this act of giving and receiving in God's name, finding a need and addressing it right there and then. You could have the lights back on, thank you. Um, these are awkward moments in a way, these moments when we realize there is a need and we don't know how to fulfill it. We might think of Jesus' gesture as somewhat ridiculous. It's, it's absurd, really, that he would see these crowds of people who have gathered because he has healed them. And then he would take these two fish and these five loaves of bread and say, here, I'm ready to feed everybody. It's dinner time. It looks like he's out of his mind. It looks like he's crazy. But Jesus is able to do this because he's not thinking about quantity. He's not thinking about how much fish or bread there are. He sees only that there are people who are hungry, and he must share whatever he has at his disposal. It's a reminder to us that whenever we go to give, the quantity of the gift or the quality of it even is God's problem. God is the ultimate source of that gift. Our job is simply to see a need and to address it in God's name. Amen? What an invitation this is. It seems like silliness at first. But when we are willing to be at God's disposal, when we see a need and we offer ourselves, as this anthem have, has said, to be an instrument of God's peace and grace, when we offer ourselves in this way, it is God who will do a great work. It is our simple gesture, but it is God's great result that will come to fruition. It's an interesting process when we look at the needs around us. Sometimes we feel embarrassed or awkward about asking, can we help? I was so glad that, that at Sierra Service Project, the project itself, the management of SSP, went before us and did that most difficult step of knocking on someone's door and saying, excuse me, do you need any help whatsoever? This is not, is not meant as an insult. It's not meant as any um, kind of negative commentary on the look of your house. This is an invitation. 
And we've heard that you need a new roof. In, in our case, this Mary Lang, she was having a shower from the snow and the rain, and she would laugh about how she always had a shower whenever when she went into the bathroom, whatever, whether she wanted one or not. This was a, a constant thing that happened, especially in the wintertime, and that cold, melted snow would penetrate her leaky roof. She said, it'll be so nice that I can choose when to have my showers or not from now on. And the youth did a wonderful job of building that roof. I think it will keep all of the water out. But in order for this to take place, we have to enter into that vulnerable place where we're not sure whether we have enough to address the need. When we're not sure whether our gift is sufficient to solve the problem, Jesus shows that that's not the question we are called to ask. It's what is in our hearts. It's the love that we share in that moment. It's the opportunity that we seize to give. Whatever is in our hands as the gift. It's a wonderful story of generosity. It, it echoes the story of the Old Testament where Jacob had given all of his livestock and all of his servants as an offering, as a peace offering to his brother Esau. He was suddenly very generous to his brother because the last time he saw him was many years ago when he was an utter rascal and a total jerk to his older brother. He had cheated him out of his birthright. He had cheated Esau out of their father's blessing. He had been utterly self-centered. Today after the sermon, we will sing as a response a song written by Charles Wesley which tells this story, the story of this scripture and how Jacob wrestled with this mysterious angel. It says a man came and wrestled with him all night long, and Jacob prevailed. Who was Jacob actually wrestling with? It's very confusing, it's very mystical, but it's a beautiful story about the wrestling Jacob must have needed to do before he returned home. Before he faced those people who last saw him as an utter scoundrel, as a selfish young boy who cheated his older brother and betrayed his father. Jacob now had to go home. Perhaps he was wrestling with himself, with his own greediness, with the self that he used to be. But over that night, after everyone has gone forward, he sent them on to, um, to meet Esau to be that gift of peace offering. So he's utterly alone that whole night. He's left to live with himself, to sleep, to wrestle, and then to be struck in the hip because though he won that wrestling mat match, he was injured. And that opponent struck his hip and injured him so badly that from then on for the rest of his life, he limped. And this one who would become the father of Israel, the one whose name would change from Jacob to Israel, had a limp to remind him of his past selfish greed and his sin. As he was changed from selfishness to generosity, he was left with that mark. And we'll sing that song, Come O Thou Traveler Unknown, to rehearse that story in a few moments. We're invited this morning to be transformed by these stories, from self-centered people to people who are always generous, however little sense that might mean, however unreasonable our gifts might appear to ourselves and to others. Sometimes we might feel that in today's culture, in our society, generosity doesn't make sense because we simply don't run into many people in need. We encourage self-sufficiency and independence. And it might even be that as the wealth of our culture and society increases, we become more impoverished to these kinds of opportunities to serve one another. Perhaps some of you have watched our nation over the years as we've gained wealth and prosperity. Perhaps you can remember times when we had to more often share with each other whatever we had, whether it was enough or not, to fulfill the need completely. One of the side effects of increasing wealth, of increasing independence, is that we become somewhat impoverished of those sacred opportunities 
to give, to share whatever is in our hands and to let God make the results something great. We're invited this morning to become generous of heart, to give of whatever we have. For this reason, I've been um, moved in recent days as I've been reflecting on the gifts that our music department and namely our director of music, Scott Farthing, has generously given to this church. There were times in which this church itself was going through need, was going through great and difficult transitions abrupt changes in pastoral leadership, sometimes traumatic loss of life among the church membership. I wasn't there during those years, but I've heard the stories, and it's very clear to me that there were some dark valleys that this church passed through, and some times when words were not sufficient to minister to the hearts of this church's people. But the music played on. And week after week, people would sing and offer that musical offering, and people's hearts were healed through music. When there was a need for leadership, Scott would do those things. He would even preach on Sundays. He would offer good news and words of encouragement and his creative, wonderful sense of humor so that people could laugh and find healing in this place. So he has not only been a director of music, he has used music and his other gifts to minister to this church, to take whatever he had in his hands to help heal the hearts of God's people. Amen? This is a great gift that he has offered this congregation, and it will not be forgotten. Such gifts are not forgotten. Because people see that we give of what we have. They care less about whether it completely fulfills their needs. And with that boldness, our church can go out into the community and serve those who are most in need. We don't have to worry about whether we will succeed or fail. That's God's problem. That's God's work. God will bring about the great results with our simple gestures of love and grace. Let us be generous of heart, ready to give. And may our simple gifts of service bring about the great results that God miraculously works by his hand. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for these opportunities to serve. We give you thanks and praise for those who have served among us through gifts of word, sacrament, and music. Lord, we give you thanks for the songs which ring in our minds and in our hearts, those beautiful songs which invite us to discipleship and a purposeful life. Lord, just as Jesus and his disciples gave whatever they had, gave of their fish and their bread, we pray that you would make us generous to those around us. Forgive us for being like those disciples at time and yielding to our fears that there is scarcity. Forgive us for the times we have kept for ourselves those things which we should have shared. Inspire us to freely give of our talents, our creativity, our song, our prayer, our simple gifts of service which carry the potential to touch the hearts of others. You have blessed us with so much. Now open our hearts so that we may give, serve, and sing your praises today and throughout eternity. For we pray in your blessed name.